Hi boys and girls. <clears throat> Today we're going to look at um, drawing snails and talking about them. So you have a book, the book of tiny creatures, and there's some great drawings and explanations of what goes on with snails in there. So <clears throat> you can pull out your book and you can use <clears throat> this picture as a reference or you can find your own snails in your yard or on a hike to to um, look at and draw and color in your nature journal, but you should always um, put them back where you found them. Um, so this is garden snails and they came to America from Europe accidentally and you might find them in your garden. I haven't been able to find them yet, it might still be too cold. Um, some people consider them pests because they can eat flowers and leaves and vegetables. Um, but there are natural ways to prevent them from bothering your, your garden. Some people eat snails as escargot, a famous French dish with lots of butter and garlic. But don't try to eat snails from your own garden. They might have been eating something themselves, something poisonous that would not be good for you. So we'll go ahead and start drawing our snail and talking about it. You can use, again, the picture in your book as a reference. <clears throat> I'll also show you a few other things first about snails. In this picture um, of a garden, they show a picture of a snail climbing along a flower pot. So snails are really good at climbing. They're able to do that because of the mucus that their body produces. It helps them stick to things. And then the mucus also keeps them from drying out, and <clears throat> and it helps them travel over things that might be kind of sharp. It's kind of like a cushion. So the mucus is a lot like what we um, get uh, in our noses when we have a cold. Um, but they need the mucus to survive in their environment. And one more thing the mucus could do is if the snails hibernate in the winter, it can dry up and kind of make a seal um, on that opening of the shell. So, um, <clears throat> snails are mollusks, and so we can write that under our title. We can use our pencil to kind of make a fun title like I've been talking about. It's interesting to make titles that relate to um, what you're drawing and looking at your nature journal. So I'm going to make an S kind of in a um, spiral design <clears throat> um, because snail shells are spiral. So S N A I L and then another little spiral here. Baby snails <clears throat> hatch out of eggs um, and they're just like tiny little adult snails with their little tiny shells. So the um, scientific name is Mollusca <clears throat> Gastropoda um, so snails are mollusks with a spiral shell. So um, slugs can be our mollusks too, they just don't have a shell. And snails can be found on land, like these garden snails that we're talking about, as well as rivers and lakes. and. Um, a whole variety of them are in the ocean. And their whole body um, can be withdrawn into the shell. Okay. Before we get any further, we can write the date, whatever date you are um, working on this. If you can find a snail to actually look at a real snail, then that is great too. So write the date that you find that real snail. So whatever date 
your working on this, write that down. Um, so mollusks are one kind of the tiny creatures that we could look at. They have soft, moist bodies. Other tiny creatures are annelids, which are um, a lot of worms, and they um, are formed from a series of rings. And then another tiny creature, group of tiny creatures are arthropods that have <clears throat> a skeleton covering their body. Um, it's different than a shell. And those can be insects and arachnids like spiders. But the tiny insects we're looking at today are mollusks. We're going to look at um, wor worms um, in a while and also some dragonflies, which are the worms or the annelids. And then we'll look at some dragonflies are, of course, a type of insect. So let's go ahead and start drawing and talking about the snail. Um, we are going to use mainly colored pencil, but maybe a little bit of watercolor towards the end. <clears throat> so snails. We'll start off with the spiral shell. So we've talked about spirals as a pattern, and we talked about those with um, with an orb spider making a spiral at the end, the center of the web. So here's another pattern of a spiral with sh with the shell of a mollusk, and you'll see a lot of these in seashells as well. So that's the basic shell. That's the protection for this kind of mollusk, and um, then it has basically a, a, a slimy, soft body, and it's just kind of like one big foot muscle, and so we have the tail, and then the bottom of this foot muscle, and then we have the head, and the head has four antenna, two of them are for eyes, a type of very simple eye that can basically just see lights and darks, not really shaped so well. And then we have the feelers down below. So there's altogether four antenna, two shorter ones, the feelers, and two longer ones, the eyes. So the eyes basically just see light and dark and not shapes really well. They are, um, because snails are mostly out at night when it's cooler. And then these are the feelers. So the eyes. And um, the feelers. Fix that so you can read it better. Um, the eyes can go back into the head if it feels, if it's, in, if it's threatened, if the um, feelers are threatened, or the eyes are threatened. Okay, so um, they basically hide in the day and are out at night. And one of the ways you can see that they've been out at night, maybe from holes in your leaves or flowers, but also from the slime that it leaves behind, the mucus, the trail of kind of a silvery substance. So we can put mucus here, and like I said before, it helps them stick to objects like flower pots or walls. It can help them crawl over rough surfaces. It's kind of like a um, an ointment, or it just kind of evens it out and makes it less less rough. Uh, the mucus keeps the snail from drying out. And 
it um, in the winter when a snail might be hibernating. It can um, harden and be like a door to seal in the, um, the body of the snail to protect it. Protecting the snail inside the shell. <clears throat> so, snails couldn't survive without that mucus. So, <clears throat> we labeled the eyes, the feelers, so basically all together four antenna, one, two, three, four. Um, and the soft, slimy body. It's like one big foot muscle. And the front half will stretch ahead and then the rest will follow as it moves. So the shell um, it, it grows as a snail grows. It keeps spiraling around. And it's, it's protection because a snail can tuck its whole body inside. We'll go ahead and uh, do some of the, the coloring for the snail. You can look at your picture of your snail. We talked about <clears throat> in the bowl here. And um, I'm going to use um, kind of some gray and some some brown and um, I'm going to look at the pattern on this snail and um, see that there's kind of a ridge here at first and then I'm going to kind of just sketch in the dark pattern that follows around the spiral. So, there's a um, dark pattern going around this way, and then it comes down the middle, <clears throat> and it, this kind of helps to show the dimension of the, the shell, and then you can just kind of do some little dashes and um, kind of leave some light spots for where it's, it's not all just a solid brown band, but it um, leaves a little bit of, of white. You can just kind of Follow that around the spiral. It gets a little bit lighter inside. <clears throat> and then you can do another row like that. And it'll get thinner, a little bit thinner in this picture depending on what part of the shell is showing. And you can leave some kind of some white areas too to show that the shell isn't completely matte. Matted, it's colored. It's, um, I mean, it's reflective a little bit. Okay, so I'm just gonna work my way down, leaving some white areas. And then I can um, 
just kind of color in lightly where it's it's a little bit lighter color with the brown. <clears throat> And we can go in with kind of some golden yellow and show, <clears throat> show that color a little bit. And kind of layer it so that it's golden brown. So I could do this the same thing with watercolor. I could even put a coat of watercolor over this if I if I want. And there's like a little bit of a ridge along the spiral too that you can see in some areas. So you can put that in there too. You know, like with most things you can get can spend a lot of time on detail and if you want to do that that that's that's great it just um, it teaches you more and more about what you're looking at okay I could even put some glue some blue in over the brown for some just to show some some darker areas Kind of like a just layering is, is fun to do with colored pencils. And I can go back with some some more brown too to cover up any of the blue that's too too blue. Okay. Well, we could keep going and going. But I'll stop there for now, and then um, we'll look at the snail's body, and we can see some texture here. It's just not um, flat slime with no texture. It's kind of got some uh, little little tiny bumps on it, and they kind of go diagonally for a lot of the body, and and kind of come along. <clears throat> That kind of helps to show the dimension of the body, and then there's there's lines that come out this way. And you can draw a little bit of the shadow of the shell. You can use your colored pencil to um, to darken in some of that area. Again, that shows some some form, which is an element of art, like we've talked about, and some texture and it's not just a gray there's a little bit of golden brown in there too so we can put that in there's a little antenna a little dot just a little dot for those very simple eyes so this is showing a little bit of the texture and then you can go in lighter with your colored pencil Okay, so this is the side and side view of a snail, and then I want to show you the underside. I'm going to just put a little bit of brown in there because there's a little bit of color. So just really look and see what colors you see, and just don't say, oh, at first glance, oh, it's, it's gray, but look, there is like a golden brown in there too. The more you look, um, the more you'll understand 
about what you're seeing. You can put a little bit of shadow under some of it to show that like part of this little foot is lifting up the muscular foot. You can color in some of this slime <laughs> with some gray and you can leave like some white area to show that it's shiny, the mucus. You can have that be pretty thick in some areas and, and thin and lighter just to show that it's not just all one color. They leave a pretty obvious trail. And this is what helps them from drying out, helps them move along, helps them stick to stuff. They couldn't survive without it. Okay, so those are the, the basic parts of the, what we see from the top of the snail.